presents The Adventures of Frank Merriwell. There it is, an echo of the past, an exciting past, a romantic past. The era of the horse and carriage, gaslit streets, and free-for-all football games. The era of one of the most beloved figures in American fiction, Frank Merriwell. Merriwell is loved as much today as ever he was, and so the National Broadcasting Company brings him to radio in a brand new series of stories based on the famous books written by Gilbert Patton under the pen name Bert L. Standish. Today, The Big Top Adventure. The Yale basketball team is in New York to play Columbia in the final game of the season. As our story opens, the game is all but over, and the Yale team is enjoying a sizable lead. Mark! Mark, over here to me! Here you are, Back again! Now, shoot! Shoot! Oh, that's a good game, Frank. Yeah. Nice shot, Bart. Come on, gang, let's give the Columbia team a chair. Yeah, all okay. Right. Ready? Yeah. One, two... Rah, rah, rah. Columbia, Columbia, Columbia. Nice game. How much time we got left? Well, we better get dressed, Bart. We don't have too much time to catch the train back to New Haven. Right, let's go. Oh, uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Yes, sir? Aren't you Frank Merriwell? That's right, sir. And you're B uh, Bart Hart. That's my name, sir. Well, I'm certainly glad to meet you, too. My son back in Florida has been a fan of yours for some time now. Made me promise to look you up first chance I got. I came to see this game just to watch you in action. Why, thank you, Mr... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Lee. Roger Lee. I'm the owner of the Lee Flame Circus. Lee Flame Circus? Oh, of course, yes. I've heard of your show, Mr. Lee. Have you? Well, that's very flattering. Well, the only reason I bothered you is because our show is on the way up to Bridgeport tonight. We open there tomorrow, and I thought, since you were so near New Haven, you two might like to see a performance. Oh, we certainly would. We'll make it a point to come down. Good. Then you'll want these. They're two free passes. Oh, gosh, thanks a lot. Not at all. And don't forget to look me up when you come over. We certainly will, sir, and thanks again. Come on, Bart. We have much time to make our train. We'd better get dressed. See you in Bridgeport, Mr. Lee. Well, it was certainly nice of that circus owner to give us these passes, wasn't it, Bart? Yeah, but I wish the show were going to play Bridgeport for more than a week. What do you mean? At the speed this train's moving, it'll take us longer than that to get back to New Haven. <laughs> yeah, we are going pretty slow at that. I wonder why. I don't know. Well, there's the conductor. We'll find out. Uh, conductor! Yeah, what is it, boys? What's the trouble? The train's been creeping along at a snail's pace for the last hour. Yes, yeah, you're going to be pretty late, all right. Can't help it, though. There's a special circus train ahead of us. A circus train? Is it the Leith Lane Circus? Yeah, that's the one. But she's switching off on a siding right up ahead here. After that, we'll make better time. Well, I certainly hope so. We're over an hour late already. Uh, sorry about it, boys, but there's nothing I can do, you know. Oh. There's nothing we can do either. Hand me that magazine, will you, Frank? Sure. Here you are, Bart. <laughs> Sully, what happened? I nearly got thrown on my face. I don't know. It felt like someone pulled the emergency cord. All right, now, keep calm, everybody. Keep calm. There's a little trouble up ahead, but you're perfectly safe here. Frank, the circus train. Yes. Come on, Bart. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There doesn't seem to be too much damage, Bart. Just that one car overturned. I wonder what they had in it. Well, look, there's our friend, Mr. Lee. Let's see if we can help. Uh, Mr. Lee! Well, what do you want? Oh, it's Merriwell and Hart. Hello, boys. I didn't recognize you at first. We wondered if there were anything we can do to help, sir. Has there been much damage? I can't say yet. I'm waiting for a report from Rooster, my general manager. Well, how did it happen, sir? I don't know. The brakeman tells me we ran over an open switch as we were going into the siding. Fortunately, we weren't moving very fast, so only the last few cars were derailed. But uh, how about that one that's turned over, sir? Well, that's the one I'm worried about. It was a menagerie car. Oh, here comes Brewster. Uh, what'd you find out, Brewster? Well, I don't think any of the animals were killed, Mr. Lee, but Brucey isn't in his cage. Brucey? Good Lord, we'd better round him up in a hurry. Well, who's Brucey, sir? One of the most valuable animals in the circus. A royal Bengal tiger. A tiger? Yeah. Well, I don't like the idea of him roaming around loose here in the dark. Well, neither do I. He's a mighty dangerous beast. 
We'd better start a search firm right now. Can we help you, sir? I'd consider it a favor if you would. Well, I don't know very much about handling tigers, sir, but I'm willing to try if Frank is. Good. My regular animal trainer isn't on the train. But with a little caution, I think we can handle this beast. Now, first, we'll... Miss Lee! Miss Lee! Hey, that sounds like... By George, it is. Warren, what in thunder are you doing here? Well, I was on the train back there. Someone said the circus train had been wrecked, so I came to help. We don't need your help, Warren. I thought we made that pretty clear six weeks ago when we fired you. No offense, Brewster. I I just thought I could help. Well, thanks just the same. Hold on, Brewster. We do need you, Warren. In the wreck, Brucey broke loose. Brucey? He's a vicious cat. Exactly. And you're the only trainer I ever had who could handle him. Will you help us round him up? Well, I don't know. Brewster here thinks... Confound Brewster. If you get Brucey back safely, I'll let bygones be bygones. You mean I can have my job back? That's right. I'll give you another chance. Now, what do you say? Well, what do you think? It's a deal, sir. I'll have Brucey back safe and sound in short order. Uh, you and I and a couple of the roustabouts can cover this side of the track, sir. Fine. Brewster, you take the boys and cover the other side. Just as you say, sir. Well, I don't think we'll have much trouble finding him. If I know Brucey, he's a pretty scared cat about now. He won't go far. Well, what shall we do if we find him? Oh, yes, sir. Here, uh, take this whistle. All right, but what for? If you see Brucey, try to keep him in one spot. Blow the whistle, and I'll come running. You got it? Yes, we've got it. Come on, boys. And good luck. Good luck. I hope we don't need it. No sign of him so far. Well, even if we do find him, how are we going to hold him until they get here with a cage? Yeah, that's just what I'd like to know. Well, don't you worry about that. In spite of what Mr. Lee thinks, Warren isn't the only one who can handle that cat. Why, I... Oh, wait! Get the tiger! There he is, right here near the shack. Shall I blow the whistle? No, wait. I'll show you how to get that beast. Hand me those sticks. Please? That's right. Now, I'll hold them out in front of me and point them right at him, like this. Good. You see? He's afraid of them. Now, you two boys get the door of that shack open. I think we can back him right in there. Right. Come on, Bart. Let's get it open. Well, keep your eye on that tiger, though. I wouldn't want him to jump. Uh, don't worry. There's a lock on the door, Bart. Yeah, we'll have to break it off, I guess. Yes, there's no time to worry about it now. Besides, it's a railroad shack. It'll be all right. Here, we'll use this to pry the half loose. Good, it doesn't look very secure. I think it'll give, all right. Nothing to it. All right, Mr. Brewster, the door's open. Good. Now stand back from the door and be ready to close it. Here we come. All right, Brucey. Back. Back. Back, Brucey. Atta boy. It's working, Easy. Frank. He's back in the tiger Brucey. right toward the shack. Be ready to slam right. that door as soon as he gets inside. Don't worry. Right, I'm as Brucey. anxious as you are to get that tiger uh, out of circulation. Steady. Steady, Brucey. <laughs> yep. That's the way. Just a little more, Brucey. Get ready. He's almost inside. Now, slam the door. <laughs> Listen to that. Here, brace this plank against the door. That you're keeping him. There we are. All right, Marywell. Blow that whistle. Right. Uh, that should bring them on the run. Uh, thanks a lot for your help, boys. In spite of all his big talk, this is one job Warren won't get credit for. You seem pretty bitter about him, Mr. Brewster. I suppose it does seem that way, but let me tell you this. I just as soon deal with this tiger as deal with Warren. And now that he has his animal trainer's job back, there's going to be trouble, you'll see. Well, what does he do that makes him dangerous? He's ambitious, for one thing. Too ambitious. He always did want my job as manager. Now that he's back with the show, I'm going to watch him like a hawk. If he steps out of line just once, I'll take care of him. <laughs> Good work, Brucer. How did you manage to get the big cat into that shack? I didn't have any trouble, Mr. Lee. And you were lucky. Bruce, he's tricky. You should have called us as soon as you spotted him. He might have jumped you. I'll bet you wish he had, don't you, Warren? But come on, let's back this cage up the door and get him into it. Oh, 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 Hoyle! Look out behind you! The tiger! Oh, oh, Bruce, oh, he's good, Warren. We'll kill him. We'll have to shoot the beast. Here, let me get this gun. No, no, wait. I can control him. He's afraid of the whip. Back, Brucey. Back, Brucey. You've stopped him. Get the door of the cage ready. I'll back him in. I'll get it. There you are. Now, Brucey. Easy there, boy. Back. Back. Back, Brucey. All right, close it. Ah, that was close. Are you hurt, Warren? No, he just tore the sleeves of my suit. Didn't even touch me. By the way, Brewster... I thought you said Brucey was in that switch shack. He was. I can't understand. That's it. right. We saw him go in and we bolted the door after him. You can see for yourself the door's still barred. Well, he got out some way. I told you he should have sent for me sooner, Brewster. That's what comes of leaving this work to amateurs. Amateur. Why, Easy, Brewster? No harm's been done. Brucey's safe in his cage. Now let's get him back to the train. Oh. 
Everything's taken care of now. And, boys, I certainly do appreciate all your help. That's all right, Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. We're glad to do it. Oh, by the way, the railroad officials tell me it will take several hours to clear this track. Several hours? Oh, yeah. golly, we'll never get back to New Haven tonight. Doesn't look like it. I'll tell you what, though. The railroad company has sent several carriages out for the, those passengers who want to go into Bridgeport tonight. I'll be glad to put you up in my hotel. Oh, we don't want to bother you. No trouble at all. Get your bags. Come along. Oh, Warren. Yes, sir. You may as well come along, too. If you're working for us again, you'll have to be on hand first thing in the morning. Yes, sir, I'm ready. How about your baggage? Oh, I don't have any, sir. I'm traveling light. Good. Then come along, all of you. I want the company to get some sleep. We've got a parade and a performance to give tomorrow. Quite a parade, isn't it, Frank? Look, oh, there's Warren on that animal float. I guess he's happy to be working for the circus again. And there's that... Hey, Frank, you're not even watching. Huh? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Bart. I was just thinking about something. What? Something about that wreck last night. You see, I well, got... boys, I see you're enjoying the parade. Hello, Mr. Leaf. We certainly are. Boys, I want you to meet an old rival of mine. Jonathan Hardy. Well, glad to know you. Glad to know you. How do you do, sir? Yeah, you two shouldn't be wasting your time watching a little two-bit outfit like this. <laughs> Come over to Hartford next week. See you real, sir. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, boys. Harding owns the circus himself. Of course, it isn't anywhere near as good as mine. Uh, well, <laughs> well, that's probably why he's snooping around here today, to see if he can pick up any ideas for his own show. I sure, Lee. I admit I came up here to Bridgeport to see your opening. I always like to know what the opposition is doing. Well, I hope you get an eye, folks. After what happened last night, we're lucky we can put on a parade like this. Yes, I heard all about that train wreck. Could have been pretty serious, I guess. Hmm? Could have wrecked my whole show, but it didn't. Come on, I'll show you my setup at the ground. Fine, uh, fine. See you later, boys. Goodbye, sir. Uh, glad to have met you, Mr. Harding. Thanks. Same to you, boys. Well, they seem awfully friendly for business rivals, don't they? They act friendly, but I have a feeling it's just that, an act. It would be my guess that there's no love lost between those two. Yeah, I guess you're right. But you started to say something was worrying you about last night, Frank. Yeah. What is it? About that tiger, Bart. We had him locked up in the shack and he got out somehow. Oh, I don't see anything too strange about that. There must have been some other way out, that's all. Not important. But I think it is. That train wreck was caused by an open switch, wasn't it? Well, sure, but what about it? Just this. The whole train wasn't wrecked. Just the rear cars. Yeah, but I... Oh, I see what you mean. You think the switch wasn't open when the train started over it? I'm sure it wasn't, Bart. And one more thing. That wasn't just an ordinary shack. It was the shack that housed the switch lever. Of course, I remember now. That's why it was locked. Yes, it was locked in front. But if that animal could get out the back some way, a man could have gone in the same way. That means you think that yes, someone... Yes, I think that train wreck was no accident. Someone was deliberately trying to ruin Mr. Lee's circus. Come on. I'd like to take another look at that railroad shack. There's a shack up ahead, Frank. You can see the back of it from here, and I don't see any sign of an opening. Neither do I yet. There had to be one. Yeah, unless you're wrong about this wreck being no accident. But you're forgetting the tiger. There had to be some way for it to get out. Well, we can tell better when we get closer. If you ask me, it... Frank, look. Yes, I see. If I'm not mistaken, that's our friend Brewster. Let's stay out of sight. What's he doing down here? As general manager of the circus, he should be in town. Well, the show starts in a little while. He seems to be interested in that shack, too. Look at how he's prowling around it. Oh, you know, whatever he was looking for, he must have found. See, he's starting away. Yes, and he looks excited, too. You think we ought to stop him? No, I'd rather he didn't know we were here just yet. Come on, Bart. We'll take a look at that shack ourselves. Brewster must be in an awful hurry to get back to town. He's practically running. I guess he's trying to get back before the matinee starts. What was he doing here? I don't know. But right now, the important thing is to find out how that tiger got out of his shack. Just as I thought. There's no hole here in the back, and... And no windows around the side, either. It's strange, but... Oh. Maybe this is what we're looking for. What is it, Frank? There don't seem to be any nails in the bottom of these boards. Let's see. I thought so. Look at that, will you? But the boards aren't fastened at the bottom at all. Well, all that tiger had to do was push against That's them. right. Part of this back wall opens like a hinged door. Now, that not only explains how the tiger got out, it also tells us that anyone could have entered this shack from here without disturbing the lock. That's just what I was hoping we'd and find. that means that the train could have been wrecked on purpose, all right. Exactly, Bart. I think we'd better get back to town and report this to Mr. Leith right now. Whoa! 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 Uh, 
Gosh, how are we ever going to locate Mr. Leach here? I never saw such confusion. The circus lot's a pretty busy place, all right. We'll have to ask directions from someone. Hey, there's that animal trainer, Warren. Oh, Mr. Warren. What? Oh, hello there. You two come over to see the show? Yes, but first we're trying to find Mr. Leach. Can you tell us where he might be? Sure. Uh, he has an office in that tent right down there. More than likely, he's there right now. Oh, thanks. Not at all. Enjoy the show. Thanks. We must have plenty of time before the performance. I know that Warren hasn't changed into his uniform yet. Bruce, made it back in plenty of time, because there he is right now. Where? Oh, yeah, so look who's with him. Your party. We're going into that tent together. Well, that's odd. Why should the general manager of the Leaf Lane Circus be palling around with the owner of the rival circus? I don't know. Seems to me there are a lot of things about Brewster that need explaining. But come on, Frank. Let's get over there to see Mr. Leaf. What you say is true, Frank. This is very serious. I'm sure it's true, Mr. Leaf. That switch must have been thrown from the shack while your circus train was actually entering the siding. But who could possibly want to wreck our train? Well, we told you about senior general manager Mr. Brewster out at the shack. Yes, but good heavens, he wouldn't want to hurt the show any more than I would. But what we didn't tell you was, we saw him just a few minutes ago talking to your biggest rival, Mr. Harding. There's nothing unusual about that. Harding has known both Brewster and me for years. We're rivals, yes, but we're hardly enemies. See here... You don't think for a minute that Brewster threw that switch and wrecked the train, do you? No, sir, not exactly. Actually, he couldn't have done the work himself because he was on the train at the time. Well, it doesn't matter much now who did it. We were lucky enough to get out of it with very little damage to the show. You mean you're not going to report it to the police? No, Bart, I, I can't do that. In the first place, the newspapers would pick up the story, and I'd be accused of an elaborate publicity stunt. As long as we can't name any names, we're better off just keeping this to ourselves. Well, if that's the way you want it, sir. I do. In this case, I think it's better to leave well enough alone. Well, just as you say, sir, but I think... Well, what's that? poking around these ashes, Frank. If there were any clues in this tent, the fires burned them up along with everything else. Yes, I guess you're right. I was hoping we'd find something to go on, though. Well, even though it burned everything to a crisp, the fire tells us one thing. Well, what's that? Well, we can eliminate Brewster as a suspect. He certainly didn't try to burn himself up. Not necessarily, Bart. It eliminates the possibility of Brewster's working alone in this thing. But that was never possible anyhow. Why not? Because Brewster was on the train when it was wrecked. So he couldn't have thrown the switch that wrecked it. Oh, that's so. But suppose for a minute that Brewster was working in cahoots with someone else. Why would he want to wreck the train? And what about the fire in his tent? Well, it wouldn't be hard to find a motive. Brewster could have been bribed by someone to furnish the necessary information for wrecking the train. You mean by Mr. Harding? Yeah, he'd certainly have motive enough for ruining the Leith Lane circus. Yes, Harding is a possibility, certainly. Now that I think of it, Frank, he's the only possibility. He had the strongest motive and he had the opportunity. Yes, there's something in what you say. After all, Leith, Brewster, and the entire circus crew were on the circus train. And Warren was on our train. That leaves only Harding unaccounted for. Yes. But the question is how to prove anything. Well, there's only one way. Brewster must know something about this. Enough to make someone want to kill him. When he's able to talk again, we might get the proof we need. I wonder how he is. They took him to the hospital, didn't they? Yes, right after I carried him out of the burning tent. He was unconscious then, of course. Say, didn't that animal trainer Warren help take Brewster away? That's right, he did. Maybe he can tell us how badly Brewster's hurt. Let's go over to Warren's tent. <laughs> have to excuse all this mess in my tent, gentlemen. So many things have happened today, I haven't had time to unpack and put my clothes away. That's all right, Mr. Warren. <laughs> sure, you ought to see our dormitory room sometimes. We just dropped in to ask you about Mr. Brewster. You helped take him to the hospital, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, poor Brewster, he was pretty badly off. Did he regain consciousness? 
No, and I don't think he will. The doctor in the emergency room said there wasn't much chance of saving him. Gosh, that's a shame. Yeah, I feel pretty badly about it. He never liked me much personally, but he was a good manager. So I understand. I wonder what the circus is going to do now for a general manager. Well, I wondered about that, too. I suppose Mr. Leith will have to take over the duties himself. Not on your life, Warren. I have too much to do as it is. Oh, Mr. Leith, I didn't see you come in. Just wanted to have a little chat with you, Warren. Uh, come on in, Harding. I'm right behind you, Leith. Shall we go, sir? Oh, no, no, there's nothing private about this. In fact, I'm going to announce it to the whole show. Warren, I already have another man who can handle the animals. Oh, uh, yes, sir, I know. So, in view of Brewster's accident, I'd like you to take over the duties of general manager for the next few weeks. General manager? Yes. Just temporary, of course. Brewster will only be out for two or three weeks. Two or three weeks? But I thought there was some doubt about his recovery. Not anymore. That's another piece of news I want you all to hear. I've just come from the hospital. The doctors have examined him, and they expect him to regain consciousness within the hour. Well, that is good news. Yeah, it sure is. He wasn't as badly injured as they thought at first. Of course, the circus will go on as scheduled. Well, that reminds me, sir. Uh, the show starts in just a few minutes. Bart and I had better get over to the main tent. Yes, you have, if you don't want to miss it. I wish I could come along with you, but I have too much to do right now. Oh, that's all right, sir. We'll find our way. Come on, Bart. But, Frank, we don't want to waste those passes, do we? Hurry up or we'll be late. the idea. You heard him say Brewster was expected to regain consciousness within the hour. Now you want to go to watch the surgeon. Of course I heard Bart. That's why we left. We're not going to the main tent. We're going to the hospital. The hospital? Well, why didn't you say so? Bart, I know the identity of the man we're after. Sometime within the next hour, he's going to the hospital to silence Brewster for good. And who is it, Frank? You'll see in a little while. You and I are going to be in Brewster's room waiting to trap him. Brewster's room, Frank. Should we go in? No, wait. Let's make sure no one's in there first. Someone's coming. Quick, duck in this alcove. Oh, it's only the nurse. Good. And the coast is clear now. Let's go in there. Brewster, all right. He looks pale, doesn't he? Yes, but he's breathing regularly. He'll be all right. The fire didn't seem to burn his face at all. Now, what's the plan, Frank? Are we going to hide in here? We'll just stand behind this screen and watch. Now, as soon as our man makes a move for Brewster, we'll jump him. Got it? Sure. I wonder how long we'll have to wait. Hold it. I don't think we'll have to wait at all. Yes, Bart, but he's put on his last act. Come on, let's get him to the police. Well, boys, your train should be in any minute now. I'm sorry you have to rush back to New Haven. So are we, Mr. Lee. Yes, but we have to get back in time for classes tomorrow. I'm sorry you had such a hectic weekend. But while you're waiting for the train, uh, tell me... Uh, how did you figure out that Warren was our man? It was because of his baggage, sir. His baggage? Yes. Remember after the wreck, you offered us all a ride into Bridgeport. When you told Warren to get his baggage, Warren said he didn't have any, that he was traveling light. Yes, I remember that all right. But how did it incriminate him? Well, think back again to when the tiger attacked Warren. You remember he tore the sleeve of Warren's coat. Mm -hmm. When Bart and I saw Warren later at the circus, he was wearing a different suit with no torn sleeve. Right then is when I began to think there was something wrong with his story. Sure. You see, Frank wondered where he got that other suit if he didn't have any baggage with him. Exactly. Then, later on, when we went into his tent on the circus grounds, we found he had quite a bit of baggage that he hadn't finished unpacking. And so he did. Well, where'd it come from? Well, that's just what I was asking myself. Obviously, it hadn't been on the train. And then I guessed the truth. 
Warren had never been on that train from New York himself. Why, of course. He probably stayed in Bridgeport. Went out to the switch shack, wrecked the circus train, and then pretended he was on our train at the time. Yes, sir, that's just how it happened. But uh, why did he do it? Originally for revenge. He hoped to put the circus out of business and get even with you and Brewster for firing him. He didn't succeed in that, but he was still lucky. He was given the chance to get his old job back, and he jumped at it. Well, how did Brewster figure in all this? Well, as you know, Brewster hated Warren. I think he suspected him right away, and he went out to that switch shack to investigate. And that's what he was doing when we saw him. Yes, and he discovered the same thing we did. He accused Warren of wrecking the train. Warren, to silence him, knocked him out and set fire to his tent. He was hoping not only to get rid of Brewster, but to get his job, too. And he almost did. Yes, he was feeling pretty proud of himself until he learned that Brewster was going to recover. He knew if that happened, he'd be exposed. Well, it certainly was an exciting weekend, even if we never did get to see the circus. <laughs> that's right. I still have those passes in my pocket. I well, say, that's so. You did miss it, didn't you? Well, the passes are still good. Come in any time. Thank you, sir. We may have missed the performance, but I guess that's about all we did miss. You know, the Leaf Lane Circus certainly is unique. Well, what do you mean by it? Well, it's the first circus I ever heard of where the main attraction wasn't anywhere near the center ring. <laughs> <laughs> So ends another exciting adventure with Frank Merriwell, beloved hero of American fiction, brought to you in a new series of stories by the National Broadcasting Company. And be sure to listen again next week at this same time when Frank Merriwell returns in another of his celebrated exploits. The Adventures of Frank Merriwell is produced and directed by Joe Mansfield. Frank was played by Hugh Rollins, barred by Hal Studer. The music on today's show was by Paul Taubman, and the script is written by Ruth and Gilbert Braun and William Welch. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.